Hello and welcome to this episode of Cosmic Crow Tarot, where today we're going to be doing a general reading for the mutable earth sign of Virgo. Before we get to the actual reading though, I'd like to take a moment to look at the astrological correspondences to the sign of Virgo, which are the cards that you see right here. We have the Knight of Pentacles, which is astrologically connected to the first two deacons of Virgo, as well as the last deacon of Leo. And if you watch the Leo video as well, you saw a version of the Knight of Pentacles there too. This version is from the oh, Tarot of the New Vision, which is very much like the original Rider Waite that we all know and love, but it shows like another aspect of it. And we have like down here, the bull working to, or the cow um, working to plow the fields and the knight ready to put in the hard work. That's what that card is, is the card of willing to work hard for our goals and putting in the effort no matter how boring and mundane that work might be. And when it comes to planting a garden and planting a field, which is what a lot of us are probably considering and beginning at this time, it does take a lot of time, effort, and work. And a lot of times that work is not fun and easy. In order to find success with anything though, we have to continue doing it even when the work is not fun and enjoyable. And I feel like Virgo is one of those astrological signs that really knows the importance of that, of focusing on the little details that are needed in order to achieve their goals. We'll move over to the other court card that is astrologically connected to Virgo, which is the Queen of Swords. It's the last deacon of Virgo about um, September 10th to September 20th, and then the following sign of Libra, it's the first two deacons of that. The illustration that I have here is from the Titanic Tarot. And the reason that I chose this card, um, this particular illustration of the Queen of Swords, is because this is a card of learning from the past and having experienced a painful past and using that knowledge and understanding to make the best out of the present. The illustration we see here is actually a, a person that survived the loss of the Titanic by the name of Elsie Bowerman. She uh, was, from what I've read, was a British lawyer and a survivor of the Titanic and worked very hard to help women and get women rights. I mean, you can imagine back in 1912, like that's when the Titanic sank, how hard it was for a woman likely to get into a lawyer position. So you definitely get the feeling that this woman worked very hard to get to where she was and she was very successful because she worked hard for it. Now I do know that she's not a Virgo, uh, from what I read that she's actually a Sagittarius December 18th in the 1890s I believe. So she's got that mutable energy but there's a more passion in her that's not necessarily there with Virgo but the reason I chose this card is because um, she's like the Titanic is definitely one of those painful experiences but we've learned from it and moving forward we know the importance of putting lifeboats on uh, yeah lifeboats and rafts on big boats so if situations like this occur we know how to save people really learning and understanding the past i feel is the key to finding success and having a better future i'm not ignoring this card we'll get to this card in a minute but we have the eight nine and ten of pentacles below right here the Eights of Pentacles is astrologically connected to the first deacon of Virgo, which is about August 21st to August 30th. And this is from the Star Tarot. And what I really like about this illustration, which this card is one of working hard to achieve our goals, sort of like the Knight of Pentacles that we met up here. And it's what I really like about this is it kind of relates to the Wheel of Fortune. You know, starting the next chapter of our lives, spinning the wheel with confidence and taking a risk. When we take a risk, luck is on our sides. And with this, you can see the work that's been put in already and the work that still needs done. So in order to be able to spin the wheel in our lives and have the confidence we need to achieve our goals and our dreams, we have to be willing to work for it and build the, build the walls and build the work up in order to be able to begin the next chapter or find success with the one that we are working on. The Nine of Coins, also known as the Nine of Pentacles, is from the newest deck from Patrick Valencia and the Deviant Moon World from the Triumphi Della Luna with Illustrative Pips. And I chose this card because, well, look at it. I'm trying to get it so it doesn't have that weird line on it. Um, that's the most beautiful version of the Nine of Coins or Nine of Pentacles or Nine of Discs. You name it, I've probably seen it. It's just an absolutely beautiful illustration. 
and following the Eight of Pentacles over here, the Nine of Coins, which is astrologically connected to the second deacon of Virgo about September 1st to September 10th, it shows that once when we're willing to work hard and put in the effort to achieve our goals, we find success with them. And this is the successful individual or the successful woman that has made a name for herself and pretty much buy or purchase whatever that she desires because she's worked hard to make all that money. The Ten of Pentacles is from the Shadowland Tarot and represents the third deacon of Virgo about September 11th to September 20th, 21st. And then with this, it's the card of completion. And as I mentioned in my other videos with the astrological correspondences, mutable signs, since they are at the end of the season, or yeah, the end of the season and they begin the next one, or come close to beginning the next one, because the next sign after the mutable sign is the cardinal sign that begins the next, next season, or the next zodiac sign. So this is the card of completion and shows that once you've worked hard to achieve your goals and you really felt like on top of the world and financially successful, that's when you feel like you've actually completed your, your reason and your goal for being here. But I've chosen this illustration because I feel like it represents more of what I like to see with the Ten of Pentacles and what I like to believe with it. And it's a, it is a card of generations of family coming together to celebrate. But even if those members of our family aren't even longer with us, and it's like the ancestors and past lives that we might have experienced are with us too. So there's a strong connection to earth here and a strong like energy of everything coming together and feeling complete and successful. And being the mutable earth sign of the zodiac, I feel like Virgo really knows the importance of this and are willing to make the efforts and the change in order to feel that completion and success. That brings us to the Hermit, which is the major arcana card astrologically connected to Virgo. And this is from the Modern Love Tarot by Ethany. And you can see the character here is all alone. But if you really look at these illustrations, they're all technically on, except I guess you could say the Knight of Pentacles, because over here you've got the, the little dude plowing the field so that the guy, the soldier can plant his seeds. But the Hermit here, she stands on a balcony and looks out over the horizon with all the hot air balloons. And I really, really like this illustration because it shows the how capable we are on our own if we want to achieve something. Yes, it's important to have important relationships and fulfilling partnerships with others, but there's no better partnership and more fulfilling partnership that we can have than the one we have with ourselves. So don't think that you need somebody else on your side in order to achieve your goals. Let that earthy energy and that that confidence that you need to achieve your goals help you to succeed at what you want to succeed at. I feel like Virgo is one of the signs that's really, really focused on the details. When it comes to creative energy and being able to create like material happiness and earthly desires, Virgo and Capricorn are the two signs that I feel are the most capable of it. I personally don't have like any any earthy energy in my birth chart. I think uh, Capricorn, Neptune and Capricorn is literally the only thing in my chart that it relates to earthy energy. So I always found myself like surrounded by people with these sun signs. Like my mom is a Virgo, my dad is a Capricorn, and my husband is a Taurus. So I have the cardinal, mutable, and fixed earth all in my life, like the people surrounding me. But the Hermit definitely suggests you don't need that the other people in order to achieve your goals just focus on yourself take the time to look within and really understand the secrets of your soul because virgo you are more talented than you can ever believe if you want to do something and you want to create something then be willing to work hard for it even if it gets boring and learn from the past in order to not make the same mistakes in the moving forward and then if you see your goal achieving what you want to achieve which i'm using this illustration here because it reminds me of the wheel of fortune which does connect over to the Ten of Pentacles, which is a ten, so it relates to the Wheel of Fortune. And that nine kind of feels like it's a message from the Law of Attraction where you see yourself succeeding. Whatever you want to succeed at, believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. And you can see yourself achieving it, and you're like more likely to achieve that goal. So that's a little look at the astrological correspondences relating to Virgo. And now we'll get to the actual reading. The deck we'll be using for your reading, Virgo, is the Lightseer's Tarot by Chris Ann. 
which comes in a box like this. And I forgot to mention this with the astrological correspondences, but in the description, description below, I will leave a link to purchase all of these decks if you want to add them to your collection. And I've chosen the Light Seers for your reading tarot, Virgo, I call you tarot, um, because I really love the illustrations on these decks and this on this deck, and it is one of the most beautiful decks that I have ever come across. And I feel like Virgo is a sign that's very focused and very dedicated to beauty and creating beauty. So it just made sense to me to use this deck. I hope you enjoy the message. And as always, you know, when I do readings like this and I shuffle the cards like this, because I do not like to shuffle like a normal person, I always thank the deck for allowing me to do this. This is the reason that I have a voice and I would not have it without the cards. So whatever these cards want to share with you, Virgo, that's all we ask to hear. Nothing specific. Just a general reading for some insight, empowerment, and inspiration to help you make the best of your life. You are one of the most creative signs of the zodiac, as I said. And I really feel that you can achieve anything that you set your mind to. Well, anybody can, whether you're a Virgo, you're a Scorpio, you're an Aries. It doesn't matter what sign you are. If you believe in yourself and you have the confidence you need, then you can achieve anything that you set your mind to we are focused on any other sign right now. We are focused on you, Virgo, the mutable earth sign of the zodiac. So this message is just for you and whatever the cards want to share with you. That's what we ask of them now. And we greatly appreciate anything that they have to share. This is a little bit lengthier than just the regular shuffling, but the cards do not become warped. And these cards are a little bit like flimsy. So I've never really liked to shuffle them normally. But I don't like to shuffle normally anyways, and I've told you I suck at shuffling regularly, so we do it this way. You have the cards there. They're already cut, so we just stack them back on top of each other. And fan them out. Choose this one. This one. And this one. And the bottom of the deck shares the wheel. Isn't that fitting? Since I talked about the wheel a little bit ago. Okay, and before I turn these cards over, I forgot to do the show you the crystals. You can see the green adventuring right here and the mookite right here. But all the crystals that are surrounding this are the crystals that correspond with the sign of Virgo. We have snowflake obsidian, rough amazonite, chariot, Chrysocolla, Amethyst, and Halite. So I'm sure there's more crystals related to Virgo, but those are the ones that I use. Okay, we have Death is the first card. The Knight of Wands is the second. And the Magician as the third. So you have a lot of major arcana cards here, Virgo. Which shows that this might be an important aspect of your life, an important time in your life, to really like make your dreams a reality. So the energy of the wheel, which is the bottom of the deck, I feel is like the overall energy of the message that your guides have for you today. And that energy, it shows, I feel that another chapter is beginning for you. With death appearing first, you don't have to fear that death never, rarely, I mean it's possible and I have seen it happen before, but death in the tarot rarely means actual death. And as you can see on this illustration, it actually says death and rebirth. So when one thing comes to an end, another opportunity, another chapter begins. So death appearing here in the like the first card that we get to kind of gives me the idea that something is coming to an end for you, Virgo, which means that something new is about ready to begin. With it being the middle of spring, well, yeah, we're right in the middle of spring because it's it's Taurus season, so um, with it being in the middle of spring, now is the time to really start thinking about what we want to grow and what we want to cultivate. So death and the Wheel of Fortune, like that energy shows, I feel like the winter is over. It's time to focus on what we want to create in the present. And if there's any sign I feel that's truly capable of creating something wonderful, you are on the top. You are more capable than anybody else, I feel like. And you can do, anybody can really, but you can do anything you set your mind to. So if there's any doubts or insecurities or anxiety about what you can create, 
then take this death card to represent the doubt and insecurity and anxiety. Let it die. Let it go and be confident and present in your life and believe in your ability to create your dreams. Knight of Wands follows death here, which is the most passionate soldier of the court. Now, there is a message of caution with this soldier or this knight because um, the passionate soul in there, that inner fire, can take multiple turns. Like, you might be passionate about something one day and then completely passionate about something else the next and forget about that first passion. So there's a flighty energy to that night. And when you're beginning something new, like with the Wheel of Fortune, where she's standing on top and just believing, making, uh, making magic in her life. Yeah, you can see, like, her, her arms have the black and white coming out of it, showing, like, her ability to create her destiny. And the Knight of Wands kind of shares that same energy like I have this confidence I have this passion to make my dreams a reality and I let inner fire that I have can take me far but if you really want to succeed at something then you have to focus on it and there's no sign I feel like more capable of doing that of focusing on one goal in order to achieve it to perfect it to focus on all the details and make it a reality so once the doubt and insecurity comes to an end and you're reborn or the rebirth you're reborn into this confident being that's capable of achieving your goals then this knight says let that inner fire help you soldier on to move forward creating that life that you're truly passionate about death and magician both appear in your three card reading which is i i just i truly see this as showing letting the doubt behind leaving the doubt behind letting the doubt die and finding that inner confidence that inner magician that we see here to create your dreams the Magician in the Tarot follows the Fool, making it technically the second card of the Major Arcana, but it's after, it's the actual first step in making our dreams a reality. So the Magician and the Wheel of Fortune both relate to that beginning energy. And the Magician kind of shows just starting off, like once the Fool takes that initial leap, he becomes the Magician capable of achieving his goals. But with the Wheel of Fortune appearing at the bottom of the deck, I feel like that's a message that you are more than just a beginner you've worked hard to achieve your goals in the past let that inner passion that's mentioned with the knight of wands help you to propel you to making your dreams a reality with death it's just something needs to come to an end and i really feel like it's that it's that doubt or insecurity that you might have about your ability to create and with the magician and the knight of wands it's let that inner fire help you to begin creating a life that you're truly passionate about anything is possible you are the creator of your destiny and there's the only person i feel that might be filling you with doubt is your own mind so don't let that voice of doubt keep you from achieving your goals and spin the wheel and take a chance on yourself in the next chapter of your story now the wheel of fortune or the wheel as it says here is astrologically connected to the planted planet planted yeah a planet of jupiter which is the planet in astrology related to luck and expansion so there's that there's that energy of your guy is telling you when you take a chance on yourself, when you believe in yourself, and you really let that inner magician start beginning to create that life that you're passionate about. Luck is on your side. You can do anything that you set your mind to. And this reading definitely, I feel like, shows that. Just letting the doubt die and finding the confidence to begin the path that you're truly passionate about. This is just a generalized reading, Virgo, so it may resonate with you, it may not. If you want something more personal, then feel free to comment on this video or send me a message on one of my socials. I'll leave all the information down in the description below, as well as you have the option to book the, the reading straight from my website. You can see a lot of my different decks there. I definitely need to update my website because I've added more since, but feel free to message me anytime. Send me an email or like I said, message me on the socials, whatever you want to do, and I will do a personalized reading just for you. I hope you enjoy what you've seen here today, and I greatly appreciate you watching. Thank you as always, and I'll see you again in the next one.